What's up guys, Tony Hannity's here from LazyTechGuys.com and this is the OnePlus X. Stay tuned. So the OnePlus X is not the follow-up nor the successor to the OnePlus 2. This is another line of mid-range phones by the company of OnePlus. And the idea is that for those people who, for whatever reason, couldn't afford the low price that the OnePlus 2 had, they still want to cater their market toward those individuals, hence the OnePlus X. And they come in two different colors, an onyx and then ceramic. Now the ceramic variants are only going to be available in Europe and Asia, and they only made 10,000 of those so we're not going to focus on those although that's kind of cool but it's more of a marketing gimmick more than anything else to be honest with you but hey to say that you have one of 10,000 of anything it's still kind of unique let's talk about the hardware of the phone right off the bat this is actually a really beautiful phone it kind of is a little iphone-esque in in the midst of the a9 debacle saying that htc made an iphone clone it's funny that no one really put a lot of attention to that with OnePlus, but I guess that's a good thing. I mean, to a certain degree, there is a little bit of copycatting here, but the best form of flattery is imitation, right? So it's not a complete iPhone clone. I'm not gonna go off and say that. You've got glass on the front and glass on the back. So if you are a little bit weary of how delicate that this phone is, it is pretty delicate. Plus, it's a fingerprint magnet. So if you're gonna be like me and grab a case and go, then you might be okay with that. And it is kind of slippery if you're just using the phone as is without a case. But you know, I know there are a lot of you out there that are gonna get something like dbrand skins or just go naked. I have proven in the past that it's not something that I personally can do, but if you can and you know, keep a phone without a case, good on ya. Some of the other nice things about the hardware, you have the toggle switch on the left-hand side. Now, this first appeared on the OnePlus 2, and for me, that was a huge benefit, especially in Lollipop when you have this whole weird notification of priority versus all notifications versus none. It's just really nice to just be able to go toggle up, toggle down, and or notify, whatever. And with the OnePlus X, you also have that capability. Going from a Nexus 6, it's a little weird uh, because this is a five inch screen versus a five point, what, it's nine six inch screen. But I've gotta say, after using the phone for about a week and a half now, this is kind of my new favorite size. I mean, there really wasn't any necessity to get a large phone. It was just kind of, hey, my phone's bigger than yours kind of thing. And all the other companies just started to pile up on top of each other. And with this, although it is a mid-range phone, uh, the screen size is almost perfect. It fits in the hand very well. It's weighted very well. Um, you know, you can get into the upper left-hand corners without having to shimmy up the phone. Um, the other nice thing too is they have these little micro cuts in the border or uh, the edges of the phone. So it does give you a little bit more grip as you're, as you're using the phone. On the bottom here, this is where some of the negativity of the phone starts to come out. They have bottom facing speaker. Now I say bottom facing speaker, not speakers. It is a single speaker that I guess is supposed to have some sort of stereo uh, concept, but it is one speaker and then one microphone and then a micro USB charger. So um, the speaker part, uh, they, again, they had that on the OnePlus 2, and I'm going to say the same thing I said for the OnePlus 2. Um, I don't like it. I just can't stand the fact that when my hand is right up, up against the speaker grill while playing a game or I'm watching a movie, I mean, I'll watch YouTube like this, and I can't hear anything unless I'm plugging in headphones or something like that. And so it's just one thing that I, would, I was kind of hoping that OnePlus would take into account the vast majority of people that really do like front-facing speakers, but for whatever reason they decided to just put on the bottom once again the other thing too is yes as i mentioned this is a micro usb it is not a usb type c now that's not necessarily a bad thing yes we know usb type c is the next new pretty thing but the fact of the matter is usb type c connections are quite thicker and oneplus want to keep this phone fairly thin so they had to sacrifice that um, again with a battery of 25 25 milliampere i would say make the phone bigger and also make the battery life bigger as well too so there's your trade-off but going back to the speaker though when you do use it it's fine. It's, you know, listening to music, it's okay. It's a little tinny. Um, you know, if you're just in a room by yourself, 
you're gonna be able to hear it without a problem. It's just, you're blocking it when you're holding it in two hands. So, you know, for me, I guess the argument could be said not to hold the phone in my right hand, but to hold the phone in my left hand. And that's just the habit that I'm just gonna have to either make or break for myself. But as just something with front-facing speakers, you wouldn't necessarily have to worry about. The other thing too, the phone is running Oxygen OS, which in my opinion actually is actually a pretty good, a very close to Nexus experience, but they've added one thing in the OnePlus X, which is the FM radio. Now, I know a lot of you scoff, like, why? Well, let's be real. Now, not everybody wants to use their data plan to get streaming radio, or let's be even more real. There are countries out there that just don't have the internet connection, but they have radio stations. So I'm not saying that the FM radio is the make or break reason to get the phone, but I played around with the FM radio and it's actually pretty cool. You have to plug in a pair of headphones, which it seems kind of funny because the headphones itself act like an antenna, but it, it sounds fine. You can either use the headphones themselves to listen to music or you can just switch to the actual speaker to listen to the music, keep your headphones plugged in. I had no qualms about it, it works fine. Now on the back of the phone, you have a 13 megapixel camera that shoots in 1080p for both photos and video. So it doesn't do RAW and it doesn't do 4K. In this day and age, that's something that a lot of people might expect, but at a price point of $250, that's a little bit expected or it's at least acceptable for the mass market. I would give that a pass. But one thing I'm not too keen on is this whole thing where they've abandoned OIS for their new phase auto detection autofocus. So um, the whole concept of OIS is optical image stabilization. Optical image stabilization, OIS, is supposed to make the photos a little bit clearer, more sharper, uh, definitely better in low light conditions. And in the OnePlus 2, they were pretty good. I mean, they weren't great. They weren't iPhone 6 Plus or, or, or uh, Samsung Galaxy S5 level, but they were for what they were. They were very, very good quality photos. And with the OnePlus X, they're not bad, but I would, in my opinion, I think the OnePlus 2 definitely has better quality photos. And it's not just because the megapixels are different. It's, I think, really in, to in tune with this whole move to uh, auto uh, phase detection autofocus. One thing that they were touting with the camera is that if you are focusing on something, you're trying to go from wide angle all the way down to macro, there's going to be split second, very very small auto focusing that you with your naked eye you wouldn't be able to tell and you'd be able to get really up close and personal with the subject matter and honestly um in regular room light like i am right now that was the case in really bright light outside that did not but was not the case in low light low light photos are really not that great either. But one thing I really did like about the camera is that the shutter speed was really quick. And I know with quick shutter speed, you can get blurriness and things like that. But I think this is more of a personal thing. I don't like shutters that take too long to process. And yes, I know HDR sometimes can add more processing power behind that, or if you're adding some other um, uh, post-ended uh, filter. But the fact of the matter is, for me, I want to click and then put the phone in my pocket, or click, click, click and put the phone in my pocket. And with the, with the OnePlus X, it allows me to do that. I mean, just listen to this. I like that. And one of those photos, is going to be good and I can figure out which one of those photos are after the fact. But if I had to go and then wait and then wait, whatever it is that I'm watching, I might have missed it because of those split second intervals. So at least that's good. Video is not bad as well too. Like it says, 1080p, can't really expect too much, but for this size screen, it looks really nice. And with the front facing camera, it's not really wide angle. I know I might've said that in another video that I did for Fandroid when I first did impressions on the OnePlus X, but you know, just for a single uh, photo, just you and a friend, it's actually not too bad. It still has the quick shutter as well too. So we've already touched on a few things that this doesn't have. Let's talk about something that it does have that people wanted in the OnePlus 2, and it has made its way to the OnePlus X, micro SD card slot. So the micro SD card slot is somewhat unique, wherein that it's actually a double SIM card tray slot, and one of the secondary SIM cards can be replaced with a micro SD card. So if you're in an area like here in the United States where you can just use one carrier like AT&T or T-Mobile, and we'll get to that, I know what you're saying, 
uh, you can just put your T-Mobile SIM in one slot and then a micro SD card in another slot. Uh, but if you're in another country, like say India, where having dual SIM is really more of how you use your phone in those countries, um, then you can still have dual SIM, but you just don't have the ability to have a micro, U, uh, micro SD card at the same time. So again, sacrifices are made. And another sacrifice that was made was Band 17. Now LTE Band 17 is imperative to work here in the United States on AT&T. So guess what? This guy has an AT&T SIM. This guy put in an AT&T SIM into said phone. And this guy only got 3G from AT&T. Now at first I thought maybe it's having to do with part provisioning on AT&T because the SIM originally was on a different phone, yada, yada, yada. But no, it is because it is missing band 17. So I know there's a lot of uproar about it and I'm not a OnePlus apologist whatsoever. I'm kind of upset myself, but the thing is, this is the first time OnePlus has had two phones out at the same time, in the same kind of time frame. And they are a startup, whether you really want to believe that or not. I'm going to err on the side of the idea that they are a startup, they don't have unlimited funds from Oppo or whoever else, and they can only do so much. And to say that you want your phone to have these certain bands isn't just checking off boxes in a form. It costs money, a lot of money, to get your phones uh, authorized and certified to be able to support certain bands in certain countries. And so yes, the phone here does work in the United States on both AT&T and T-Mobile. But with AT&T, you're only getting 3G. With T-Mobile, it seems to be okay with some of the other reviewers that have T-Mobile SIM cards. So I would err on caution if you're an AT&T user, maybe not get this phone right now and or at all because there's not really like a software upgrade that's just going to allow you to have band 17. It's just not gonna work out. But if you're T-Mobile or somewhere else in the world, I think you're fine. Another thing that this does not have, NFC. Hello, why? Um, Again, beautiful phone, beautiful device. It, it, you know, I brought it out into the world. A lot of people didn't say, hey, that looks like an iPhone. They just saw a really beautiful glass on both sides, shiny, glossy looking phone. We're very impressed with it. But when I mentioned to the individuals that use NFC on both iOS and Android and said this one doesn't have it, they were quite surprised. In this day and age where Google is pushing Android Pay, where more and more retailers are starting to adopt NFC payments, and not just retailers, but Coke vending machines are starting to do it as well too, it's weird that OnePlus still has taken the side of we're not gonna put NFC in at this moment. Once again though, NFC isn't just a five cent NFC reader on the back. Like it, it costs money to get it certified and it costs money to do uh, a, a research and development to make sure the NFC does work in the phone. Um, so again, I guess I can understand that, but if you're looking for NFC, it's not gonna be found in here. You're also not getting quick charging. You're not getting 4K. So you're not getting a lot of things. What are you getting for the OnePlus X? You're getting a pretty decent phone for 250 bucks off contract. Let me say that again. Sorry, in case you didn't hear. $250 for this phone. Now granted, there are other companies out there like Motorola that have other phones of similar caliber, of similar capability for similar prices. But it comes down to do you trust Motorola now that it's under Lenovo and Motorola had made some promises and had to fall back on those promises? Do you trust OnePlus where in that they are kind of a startup and they're still trying to figure out their way with the whole invite system and getting the updates out as quickly as possible? Since I've owned this, I've already had two updates from OnePlus and you know, they're supposed to fix some camera UI issues and some other bugs and they were pushed out really, really quickly. So we don't know when Marshmallow is coming to this phone, but you know, I would think that they are starting to learn from their past mistakes and that's really, really good. That's really positive. And to me, if you don't need NFC, if you are okay with one day battery life, if you're fine with having a five inch AMOLED display, but it doesn't have 4K video resolution, it doesn't have the best of the best a speaker grill on the bottom, for $250, it's not a burner phone, 
but it definitely is a bringer phone. Bring your phone. I don't know, that was, that was a bad pun. But yeah, I, I definitely recommend, if you can, check this out. And guess what, you can check this out. OnePlus is gonna have some pop-up shops around the world, so you kinda have to be around these cities. I think Paris is in one, then they're gonna go to London, New York, and then back here in San Francisco eventually. And you can go to these pop-up shops and these boutiques, and if you decide, hey, I like this and I wanna buy it, you'll be able to buy it right there, then and there without having to deal with an invite. So the invite system, I'm not gonna get into it. It is an invite system. Just deal with it for now. Leave your comments below telling me why or why not. It's a good idea to have an invite system. But um, overall, yeah, I mean, it's not the greatest of phones, but for $250, it's kind of hard to not recommend. Uh, and it is not for everybody, but I would still recommend for those people who are looking for a phone around that price range, if you're willing to sacrifice and give up some of those new capabilities that Marshmallow allow, um, and just having a very good premium mid-range phone, the OnePlus X might be for you. So that's it for me right now. Thanks a lot for watching. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave that in the section below. And uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and we will talk to you guys later. Peace.